Okay, so welcome everyone. I'm Frances Garrett. I'm speaking to you from Toronto, from the University of Toronto. And we're super happy to have um, Alexander Gardner and Catherine Zucci here to present to us the Treasury of Lives and all of the exciting, um, amazing updates that have um, been made to that project uh, recently. So I can't wait to um, hear more about that. And um, I think we'll start by um, asking Dr. Lauren Hartley, who's here uh, with us from Columbia University to um, introduce our event a little bit further. Hi, uh, this is just to, uh, yeah, to acknowledge at this event, um, thankfully uh, uh, sponsored by the Ho Foundation um, Tibetan uh, Buddhist Studies Center, um, together with the East Asian Library at STAR and the Chang Yu Tung East Asian Library at um, University of Toronto, uh, with which we have a, a shared um, cooperative agreement um, in providing such reference services, um, as well as collection, a cooperative collection development. And uh, this is a great opportunity for those of you who are on the call to learn about uh, the Treasury of Lives database, which is an encyclopedic um, uh, biograph, uh, uh, encyclopedic level uh, um, biographical database with about over 1200 entries. And um, we're going to hear both from um, the project director uh, Alex Gardner, who has his PhD from the University of Michigan, um, who is author of a an important um, biography um, on Zhang Kung Chul that came out recently, um, and his many years of teaching experience and writing and research in Tibetan Buddhism, um, devoted to life study and making those accessible to people. Um, the pedagogical um, uh, pedagogical uh what to say potential for this website and its use already in classes which they may talk a little bit about here is really enormous um and Catherine suji is also with us um as a main editor and i've worked with her also learned a lot from her on um, her, with her metadata expertise um, and they're doing some really important projects in connecting with other resources which i'm sure you'll also hear about and finally, I just want to emphasize that um, both the University of Toronto and Columbia now subscribe to the Treasury of Lives. While it's an open source database, there needs to be some sort of support model for that. And one of the things they do is that they offer special services to students um, for mapping, for research assistance, et cetera. And I hope that they'll be addressing that as well today. So just to thank you and I'll sign off. <laughs> thank you. All right, so um, Katie and I are gonna tag team this. I'll start with a, sort of a tour of the website um, and then Katie can, can talk about the, uh, the benefits of the subscribers and also uh, some of the more technical upgrades that we're doing um, since she understands that better than I do. Uh, so I'm gonna go right and, and share my screen and then I'm just, we're just gonna walk through the website. Um, uh, and then uh, really anyone who has got questions, just sort of unmute yourself and, and jump in. Uh, we, can, we can do this pretty informally. So I'm gonna share my screen. So did that work? Does everyone see my screen? Yes, right. yes. Um, <clears throat> so this is the Treasury of Lives. So um, it's, it's kind of unique. I don't know if you can qualify unique, but uh, it's uh, in that it's a an academic and also um, sort of public uh, um, uh, a resource, academic resource, but also uh, really a resource for anybody that that it does not have an, an academic home. We are a small, independent, uh, really two staff uh, project. Uh, we have our own. Um, uh, independent financial uh, identity, but we were started as a project of a small family foundation. So for the first 10 years, we were a project within a foundation. And then the last uh, couple of years, we've been independent. Uh, so this means we have a lot of flexibility. It also means we're sort of floating free uh, uh, financially. Um, so we uh, uh, fortunately, have a, a very nice grant from the National Endowment for the Humanities, uh, and uh, and and we're we're putting it together, um, and we have uh, great relationships with Columbia University, with uh, the the um, the Buddhist Digital Resource uh, BDRC Buddhist 
digital, yeah, whatever TBRC used to be, um, and and another organization. So we're we're looking to partner out with as many projects and as many like-minded organizations as possible. Um, so we're independent, and and yet I like to think we're also very uh, interdependent as we as we develop this. So, um, and also it's, as an encyclopedia, obviously there's no one author. We, uh, we rely on scholars um, around the world and that includes uh, you know, senior practitioners, translators, as well as uh, you know, professors at universities to write, uh, to write in and tell us if we've got something wrong, uh, to make suggestions. So we have so far 120 authors to all of our biographies, which are you know, at this point over 1,200. So it's very much a community project. Um, so here's the homepage, uh, and you see uh, there's lots of sort of elements of it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to sort of take you through each, each aspect of the site. Um, and first, I want to say we've, we've set this up to be able to search directly for the person that you want to, to know about, and also to browse in many, many, many different ways. So, so you just go up to this search field, and I'm going to give you some examples. You can just search for Tsongkhapa, right? Um, I think I spell it right, Tsongkhapa. And you get a drop down menu of people. You can click right to, uh, to the biography. Uh, and you get Tsongkhapa is mentioned in, in other biographies, so you can see that. Uh, go back to the home. Um, what if you want to search in Chinese, Tsongkhapa? You can also do that. Um, what if you don't really know how it's spelled? What if it's, you think it's Tsong? What if it's Ka? Bah, something like maybe that, uh, I don't know. Nope, not that one, but uh, let's see. I, um, uh, what if you forget, what if you forget something? No, so we, I'm not giving you great examples of uh, unforgiving. We try to be, what about that? Will that work? Sorry, I'm, I'm not uh, giving you good examples of, um, I think that one's supposed to work. Nope. Sorry. Anyway, the idea is that you can misspell things. Tsong ka pa. I think it was this one. Yeah. If you if you uh, forget the H in Tsong ka pa, uh, that will allow it. So it's sort of reasonable misspellings um, will still get to your biography. The idea is as our phonetic. We we have a standard uh, phonetic. Um, but we also recognize that there's lots of alternative phonetics out there. Uh, and sometimes, uh, you know, we, we to, the, to, to the best of our ability, we've been including all of these, these alternate phonetics. Um, you can also, if you just happen to know uh, the, P, the, the TBRC P number, you can go straight to it as well. So you can search by name, you can also search for P number. Um, and uh, so, so, so that the idea is you can you can immediately search for something. You can also then uh, I'll take you through all these different ways of browsing. So um, let's go back to um, to Tsongkhapa, um, and I'll show you. This is uh, so the the biography obviously of of the project. The biography is the main sort of the, the, the core of the site. So what does the biography look like and what sort of, what do we offer with the biography? We offer uh, a pretty um, hopefully extensive narrative of, of the life of the person. Uh, within the, uh, the biography, you'll see uh, links to places. You'll see links to other people. Um, you'll see um, you'll see images uh, drawn from Himalayan art resources that you can then go and explore further. Uh, you'll see this feature, which uh, we call sort of the, um, the map of the person. If you come to the map from uh, an individual person, you'll see now all the places in red are places that uh, are associated with Tsongkhapa. Um, I'll look at them, we'll look at the map later. Uh, you see uh, what tradition, the main tradition that the person is associated with, offices that person held, a list of teachers, and a list of students. Um, and all of these are clickable. You can click to them and then just go back to the, where you were. And the idea, this data, 
Um, Katie can talk a little bit more about the sort of data and the data management, but this data is primarily drawn from BDRC, um, but we're slowly updating it as well. I mean, BDRC obviously is not uh, is not uh, complete um, as are we, and so we 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 try to put more information. Um, you will see historical periods, which you can click to. You get a nice sort of summary of the 14th century, a timeline of all the people whose biographies we have who lived in the 14th century, all of whom are clickable. Um, and uh, yeah, and then the institutions that this person is associated with, that, um, all of which again are clickable. Um, and I'll look at some of these pages again. So the, the biography is, is, is meant for, uh, to give you the basic outline of the person's life, uh, as well as a lot of additional information, uh, where, who, uh, when, um, and as, as well as links straight to uh, the Buddhist Digital Resource Center. Um, uh, and, and as soon as they are ready to launch their new site, we'll have that, uh, that link will go to their, to their new site. Um, so that's basically the outline of a, of a uh, and then, you know, we have a, a little bit of Tibetan. Um, if you want to read some of these biographies uh, in Tibetan or Chinese, you have the option at the top here to, to toggle between the languages. Um, let me just show you what that looks like. We don't have the, the full biographies, um, but we do have the, um, the navigation in, uh, in both Tibetan and in, in Chinese. Uh, and we, you know, we we aspire. We would love to be able to translate uh, the biographies into Tibetan and Chinese as well. You know, maybe someday. But we have a lot of the summaries done uh, in in Chinese and Tibetan. So you you will be able to find something. Uh, we're trying to do more um, to provide for our non English readers, essentially. Um, so so these so that's searching, right? You can search directly for for a person. Um, you get a drop down menu of some of the options. You go to that person. Uh, you get a list of of of, uh, of of other biographies in which that person is mentioned, uh, and then you click through to the person. Um, so 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 if you know exactly who you want to look for, and you have a good idea how to spell it, or you know the P number from the Buddhist uh, from from BDRC, you can go directly to that person. But then, what if you want to sort of uh, if you want to browse? We've we've uh, we've tried to come up with many many different ways of browsing the material because you you might have some sense of who you're looking for, but you don't know exactly uh, who that person is. So so you'll see on the on the there's four main uh, categories. Uh, for browsing. Uh, and the first is traditions, uh, meaning the religious traditions of Tibet. So Bodong, Bun, Geluk, Jonang, Kalachakra, Lamdre, Marpa Kagyu, Nyingma, Sakya, Shangpa Kagyu, Shijie, and Chud. So these, we try to be as uh, as encompassing as possible. Uh, you know, you might think, why is Raluk a tradition? You know, why is Lamdre separate from Sakya? Um, if anybody says they're a tradition, we're 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 fine with that. We're not going to quibble. Um, Jonang obviously is Jonang Jonang, or is Jonang part of Sakya? Um, you know, people can can argue about that. We're just trying to make it easy for people to find uh, to find biographies. So you you click on on any one of these, um, you know, Marpa Kagyu, for example. Uh, this includes all of the 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 major and minor. Uh, traditions of Kogyu, um, you get a nice sort of uh, summary of the Marpa Kogyu, um, a timeline of all the biographies of Kogyu masters that we have, you know, which are pretty extensive. Um, and, and then you have scroll down past the timeline, uh, some of the institutions that are marked as, as Marpa Kogyu, uh, and then all the biographies that we have, all just in a list, 264 uh, related biographies of, of, of Kagyu masters. Um, so uh, tradition, um, so uh, then you could also, let's see, let's just sort of scroll through some of these, Jonong, um, right, what happens on the timeline uh, 
you can click any one of these um, and then you can go to the biography. And again, it's, it's all meant to be able to go forward. Uh, you wanna read about Tangbache, uh, you then, you might wanna go straight to Dolpopa. You might wanna read um, about uh, one of the institutions that this person is associated with, Jonang Monastery. So the idea is to click further and further and further, you know, not to waste your time, but to be able to help you find more information about the thing. You're interested in one thing, here's some more background information, here's some more associated information, here's, here's, here's more, um, more knowledge for you, right? Um, so that's tradition uh, is just one of the main, uh, another one, people. So, so we, we stepped back and we looked, what are some of the categories of the, of the people whose biographies we have on the treasury. So uh, women, treasure revealers, translators, royalty, prominent families, Lhasa aristocracy, Indian masters, incarnations, government officers, doctors, artists, clans. So clans, right? Um, this is, you know, a, a field, uh, this is a topic that's, uh, that is a huge uh, need in the field for people to get in and really work through the clans in Tibetan, in Tibetan religion. And clan, we use the word very loosely, any sort of family, uh, sort of biological network of people, um, we've got, um, we put in clan. So, and any of these people, uh, so when we have a, a record of somebody who belonged, you know, in, in the biography, it says they belong to a particular clan, but we're going to mark it. Um, it might have a, a BDRC number. At some point, they were building out their clan data and they came up with C numbers. So we will display that. And then we'll display, you know, this uh, this Gyu clan, only one person, right? Um, and I think that's going to be the case in most of them. You're only going to find one unless you've, uh, you know, some of the clans a little bit, you know, one person in draw. Um, Kura, right? Here's a, here's a clan in which uh, there were quite a few members that we have biographies for, uh, 16 people who, uh, who claimed association with this clan. Right. So um, it's again, it's another way of browsing. It's another way of finding if you know you're interested in the Cura clan, you can come to, to, to the treasury, search for it, um, and uh, you'll have all these biographies. Uh, let's see, back to people. Um, if you're interested in uh, not so much religion, but in uh, some, uh, say, the, uh, the economic history of Tibet, you know, the Pongditsang family, a very important trading family from Kham, uh, sort of 19th or uh, 20th century. Uh, and we have a bunch of biographies of this family. So with photographs of them. Um, so Rapka Pongditsang, you know, here's a nice image of him. Uh, the biography connected to other people. Um, photographs of him. Um, and then another, uh, I didn't mention this uh, when we were looking at uh, uh, the biographies, every biography has a bibliography associated with it. Um, so all the sources used in the biography as well as others that, we, that we've come across since we'll add uh, to the source list. So, so the, the biographies are meant really for starting places for research, you know, sort of uh, uh, come here, uh, get what you need um, to, to go further and learn more. Th um, back to people, uh, royalty. If you're interested in uh, in uh, in the in the small kingdoms of uh, of Tibet, so the the rulers of Chone, right? We have biographies of of, of many of the kings uh, of this small kingdom up in uh, up at the Binamdo. Um, you know, great patrons of, of Buddhism, but also. Uh, you know, people in their own right. So 13th ruler, no images of them. We use a sort of this stock image. Um, uh, again, with sources uh, and links to, uh, you know, the clans uh, and uh, uh, the institutions of, of the person. Uh, what else do I want to show you from... Um, uh, Alex, do you want to say a word about the quality of these and the peer review um, that? Um... Yeah. All right. Let me step back. So, so the biographies are um, since about five years ago, we've been doing peer review uh, on all the biographies. Um, the Treasury, it, you know, as I said, it's it's over ten years old, and when it started, it was a a very different project than it was now. The initial biographies were written for uh, a different project, uh, and then were brought in. Um, 
And as we've developed, we've sort of developed our own standards as well. Uh, so the editing is a little more clean at the later biographies. Every biography uh, gives you the year, the month and the year of it, of it published. So if you see a biography published in uh, 2008, you'll know it's an early biography. A, bi a biography published uh, last year or this year even will have, uh, I think, a higher quality, more extensive research uh, and will be peer reviewed. So uh, we do blind review on all the biographies uh, ever since we instituted this. Uh, we also have started using footnotes where in early days we didn't use footnotes. Um, we've always had sources, but we didn't initially have footnotes. So um, so I'd say the quality is, is more uniform on the later biographies um, and it's sort of increasing in detail and in, um, um, I, I mean, I would say that the, the, the information on the, on the site is reliable, uh, but I think it's, it's more extensive on the later biographies. Um, so, so in terms of the peer review, uh, we, we did this for two reasons. One is so that, uh, um, well, sorry, I'll, I'll say the peer review was, was essentially to sort of, to, to increase the sort of uh, um, credibility uh, of the entries, right? Uh, so that our readers could be sure that it's not just me reading them, right? Uh, I'm, I'm sending them out to experts in the field. Uh, and then uh, it's also, uh, uh, as more and more people are publishing on the treasury, like I said, we've got about 120 uh, authors, we want to be able to offer this as a publishing venue for people who need tenure or who are you know, advancing in their, in their careers for whatever reason. Uh, a biography published that's peer reviewed is obviously, it's a, it has a higher standing in the uh, professional field. Um, same with, with footnotes, right? With footnotes, uh, it, it's, uh, it adds sort of a, a layer of professional professional quality, but it also allows readers to, to, to pinpoint where this information came from uh, and do further research. So, so we want to be <clears throat> we want to be readable by the general public, uh, accessible to people of faith and people who are just curious as, as historians or as scholars. Uh, <clears throat> and we also want to provide means for further research. Um, <clears throat> so <clears throat> So then let me, let me show you, uh, so on the home, so we also have images. So we have uh, uh, paintings, photographs, documents, and sculptures. Uh, paintings, we've been marking up this for, for quite a while. Uh, some of these beautiful paintings in Himalayan art. Uh, who are these people? Um, so you can hover over with your, with your mouse uh, and go to the biography. Uh, and you can also, if there's any uh, associated figures, you can, uh, let me give you, let me give you this one. It's absolutely beautiful. So the third Karmapa. Um, so here he is, the third Karmapa. Um, if you hover your mouse over, it will show you who they are. Kawapeltsek, Taranatha, Vairochana, uh, Bodhampanchan, Cholinamgyal. You can click through them. We don't have uh, a biography of him, so there's no information on it. Um, but of Taranatha, we do have a biography, so they'll, they'll, you'll get uh, information about him, uh, as well as you can click right through to the, to the biography. Um, another, an, another option is here on the list, you can, like, if you, you want to see who the eighth situ is, well, there he is right there, um, it'll, it'll show up. So we have, uh, we have many, many paintings um, marked up in this section. Uh, it's a great way to find illustrations if you're if you're doing a paper or you're you're publishing something, uh, and it's a, just a great way to see, um, you know, I, I can't really say what these people look like because it's all idealized, but uh, um, yeah. Uh, and the other another interesting thing we've been doing more of, of is historical photographs. So as we get more and more bi uh, biographies of people who lived in the 20th century, 21st century, um, we're putting up photographs of them. So here's a great image of Gene Smith, you know, Harriet Talbot, uh, Sogyal Rinpoche, and uh, Lobsang Lathumpa, whose biography we've, we've just put up, um, was obviously a, a very important 20th century uh, Tibetan translator, uh, politician, um, teacher, uh, so you can click through to his biography. Um, and then also we're doing more and more of, uh, uh, we aspire to uh, 
see these. Uh, so uh, the Lobsang Lalumpa biography that Katie worked on, um, uh, his son, Sempe Lalumpa, sent us uh, images of a lot of uh, historical documents. Um, so we have four that we've put up so far. Is this sort of a test case? So a letter from the exiled government to Lobsang Lalumpa, right? Um, and uh, so we, we, we link it to uh, Lobsang's uh, La Lumpa's uh, biography. Uh, and we, we, again, we aspire to do more of this uh, as well as the photographs. Uh, there are so many amazing photographs uh, uh, out there, you know, floating around the internet or, um, or uh, uh, you know, that are, that are not necessarily identified. There are people who know them, you know, so we're, we're searching to get uh, more. So this is a nice one, right? Here's uh, here's uh, Tseung Chapjong, you know, one of the great uh, scholars, uh, the Amdo scholars. Here's uh, you know Gyeong Chuki Gyelpo, and here's the Meu Gyelpo, Pelgon Chunli Rupten, right? Who was a king in uh, the Meu uh, kingdom. Um, so we have a biography of him, right, by uh, by a young scholar Pelgon Gyel. Um, another photograph of him. So then the final sort of uh, um, main feature on the homepage is the map. Uh, and this is, I think, one of the most exciting uh, features on the site. Um, it zeroes in on Tibet. Uh, we've got, you know, the sort of main uh, places marked, the sort of the, the, the cultural regions marked. Uh, you can zoom in, uh, you get county seats marked, uh, and then you have more and more um, monasteries show up the more you zoom in, um, which you can click on. We don't have an image of it. We'd love to have an image. Uh, if people send us an image, we'll, we'll put it up. Uh, and then you can click through to the description of this place, some sources on this place, uh, and biographies, a timeline uh, of, of uh, people associated with it, abbots uh, of the monastery, uh, and the biographies we have associated with it. Um, Uh, and the map is, uh, you know, again, it's it's fully interactive. You can search on it, so you could search for Lebron, right? Uh, and there it is. It comes up, uh, you know, Lebron and Amdo, but there's also Jitok Lebron and uh, Pabonka Lebron. So uh, it gives you all of the options uh, in red, highlighted. Click on it. Here's a, a pretty picture from a painting. Uh, it's got a little summary, and again, you can click through to the place. Get a uh, uh, a description with links to people, uh, the timeline, uh, incarnation lines associated with Lebrong Monastery, uh, um, associated places, uh, abbots and officers, uh, and then the biography, 73 biographies on the site uh, associated with Lebrong. Uh, oh, I, this is what I want to show you. So. Um, so the map you can get to by going straight to the map, you can also get it by uh, going to biographies. Uh, this little feature, if you click on the, the map icon in a biography, you'll be taken to the map of the person's activity. So, so here, you know, it's this Kala Rinpoche who traveled a lot in the West. So we're, we're zooming out of Tibet and we're getting into uh, you know, Dharma centers that he founded in, in, uh, in North America, in Hawaii, in, uh, you know, in Europe, uh, in India. Um, and as you zoom in, you'll see more places uh, associated with him. The red means these are places uh, connected to, to Kala Rinpoche, um, but everything else will, will show up as well. Um, let's see. Um, all right, and then, um, so a final thing you can search for, you can search for individual persons, but you could also search for a term uh, or a place. Uh, so I search for Mongolia, and then I'm gonna get 107 biographies uh, of people relating to Mongolia. And now this is, just a, this is just a bare list. It's not broken down by people who were born in Mongolia or people who went to Mongolia, but you can, you can go through it. And it, here's, uh, Here's a, a 17th century Mongolian man who, uh, who um, 
Oh, actually, he was a Tibetan man, but he had a, a, a Mongolian name, and his Tibetan name is not known. So here's a biography by Evelyn Young. Um, right. Uh, let's see, who, who, what else? Uh, if you, uh, people who went to Mongolia, people who, uh, who you know, there's a lot of folks from Amdo, obviously, right, who uh, went back and forth. Uh, the second Kalka Jetsundampa. Um, so again, the, the biography with places, um, institutions. And so here we see a lot of, uh, of Mongolian institutions, um, uh, a, uh, a Mongolian, uh, you know, and if we want to see this place on the map, we just click the map icon um, and it will take us to it. Uh, and the map right now zooms in very, 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 uh, Right, it'll tell you to take us right to downtown Ulaanbaatar. Uh, we can zoom out a bit, um, click on it, you get a description of it. So that is sort of, let's see, what else? Um, traditions, map, resources, images, subscription. Um, Katie, I think that's pretty much uh, all we need to say about the, the treasury, right? Um, Yeah. So, Katie, do you want to uh, to uh, to to talk a bit more about the um, the data and the subscription resources? Sure. Um, just a few things. We can also search by T BDRCG record ID if you happen to know that on both the map and in the search bar. Um, and there, Alex is doing it now. Right. Um, one other feature that. I find very useful is um, for when we actually don't have a biography of a person, but it's mentioned in a biography. Mm -hmm. So if you go to a biography, um, I think Alex, let's see if we can find somebody, you might find, um, you might notice that the students and teachers list, sometimes there's right. phonetic and sometimes there's Wiley. If right. there's no phonetic, but there's Wiley, that's, that's our little way of knowing that we actually don't have a biography of that person. Right. So here we have a, a placeholder and maybe somebody's interested in writing that biography. Um, but more importantly, you can actually click right over to BDRC and get the information that they have access to the primary sources. Um, in this, this example, I mean, there's examples where the placeholder page is actually very extensive and you might see 10, 15, 20 references to that person yeah. in biography. So even though we don't have a bio, you can actually kind of get a sense of the social, the social network around this person. I'm trying to think of a good example offhand. Let me think of like one of the karmapas. Right. Um, uh, so. There's something. There's one. Um, so that's just another useful feature. And also it enables you to seamlessly link over to BDRC. Um, so I wanted to point that out. And then I don't know, maybe now I should discuss some of the tools that are available to you all as subscribers. Great. Um, should I share my screen maybe? Yeah, why don't you do? I'll stop mine and you can start okay. yours. Okay. Let's see. Give me a second. Now I'm trying to find my share screen button. Sorry. Oh, there we go. Okay. Is that coming through for everybody? Yep. Yep. Okay, good. Um, I'll go to full screen mode. So here, if you are accessing the site from your institution, which I think nowadays mostly means you're accessing it through a proxy from your library, you'll see this little piece of text at the top saying access to subscriber resources. Um, and that means that you're able to get the subscriber resources, which are on the resources page down below. Um, and in terms of access, um, it should be pretty seamless. You can either, as I said, uh, access it through your institution. 
if you're at the library physically, or you can create um, an account using an email that's associated with your university. So if you create an account with your email at columbia.edu or University of Toronto.edu, you will automatically, because of that domain, have access to these services wherever you are in the world. Um, Is that so via the subscription button, Katie, just to show us how we would do that? How to log in. Actually, you just create a login. So normally, like here it says my account, but if mm -hmm. you weren't logged, I'm logged in. If you weren't logged in, it would say login. Okay. Go login. So it's basically, basically treasuryoflives.org slash login. And you just okay. create, a, you just create an account. Thank you. And there's, there's some little features aside from being able to access everything. If you have an account, you can save biographies. You can save um, custom timelines that custom timelines that you've made. So, um, you know, and it's, it's, it's an easy way to access if you aren't having, um, if you don't have IP access, if you're, proxy isn't working or you're somewhere else. So um, with your subscription, you can access our data exports page, which is just got a few exports here. You can see those. But more importantly, if there's something very specific that you need, we can create that export for you. So if you're looking for a very specific type of information, maybe you just want to know founders of monasteries in a certain region or founders of monasteries that were created that were founded in the 17th century, um, we can do something more specific. So you can just reach out to us either on subscription or our names. It all comes to us eventually. Catherine at treasurelabs.org, Alex at treasurelabs.org. So um, that's one of your resources. And then classroom support has bibliographies, lesson plans, syllabi, some information sheets. Um, advanced search allows you to do a more faceted, refined search. So the search that Alex showed before is a keyword search, which is very broad. If you're looking for more specific information related to, you can select just people or places and you can do a kind of more faceted search. Um, and I really actually wanna spend a little bit of time to show you how to use this custom map tool. So you can access this map tool actually either from that resources page or actually, if you go to the map and you're logged in, you'll notice that if you expand this menu at the very bottom, you see custom places. So this allows you to create your own custom map as long as we have a place entry for it in our database. And at this point, we have close to almost seven, we're just shy of 700 places. Um, there's many more places in the database that don't have coordinates and we're constantly trying to find those locations. And so if anybody comes across a record and you think you might know those coordinates, please get in touch with us. Um, and so this allows you to create your own custom map. Um, and you can do that by entering BDRC IDs. You can do that by entering a phonetic name. You can do that by entering Wiley. And so here I'm gonna make a quick custom map of the six mother monasteries of the English tradition. You'll see generate map here. And oh no, we're not seeing all of our places. That's because the way that this map is, um, is set, you have to sometimes zoom in and sort of play around. So if you don't see all your places showing up at first, you kind of just need to zoom in. You might need to adjust your browser settings, maybe um, minimize a little bit, maybe make your browser settings a little larger. Um, and this is a cool tool because you can see distances between places. You can um, also choose to look at the satellite view. You can add folk region, county seats. It gets pretty busy when you add everything. So that's why we wanna give users this ability to kind of customize the look. For whatever your purpose is, it might be enough for you to take a screenshot and use this for reference. But if that's not working for you and you want to be able, you want to customize your label some more and maybe you have experience with mapping software, you can actually download um, this as a spreadsheet and then you can pull it into QGIS or whatever software you like to use. And we're very happy to help you do that um, if you have a very specific mapping need. Um, and we have resources too. Uh, I have a pretty big folder of reference maps that I've just sort of been collecting from other print sources. So you can take a look at how other scholars have used maps and how they've handled issues like borders, um, cultural regions, et cetera. Um, so that's how you can play around with the custom map tool. Um, and then 
if you're in this sort of custom view and you want to get back out, you just have to click out and then clear everything here and you can just search like normal. So that's the custom map tool, which I encourage you to check out and give us any feedback if there's features that you think you'd like to include that aren't there. Um, we're always excited to make uh, updates and tweak things here. We recognize that there's sort of a drawback to um, having a kind of clean map view. It mean, we rely on hierarchies and so that means that you don't see everything when you're zoomed out because there's just too many places. So if you don't see a place, you kind of just need to keep zooming in. And the more you zoom in, the more you find. Um, so for that reason, if you're, if you're looking for a place that's not showing up on the map, but you think it might be in the database, you can also just do a global site search outside of the map page to kind of see where those records might be. Um, so I'm gonna go back to resources, resources to show you um, a custom timeline tool that we have. It's pretty basic at the moment, but you might find it uh, useful to sort of visualize people across time. So there's a few, a few presets here. You can do a timeline of students and teachers. And here again, you can use BDRC IDs. You can create the timeline. And this is gonna show all students and teachers of Tsongkhapa. And there's a, um, this little button here sort of gives you different options for how you can view it. And you can actually save the timeline and name it something if, if, you, have a, if you have an account. And you can also, I'm gonna just show you how to create, um, sort of you can, in the same way that you can create your own custom map, you could also create your own custom timeline if you had a very specific list of people that you wanted to visualize across time. So here I'll just do a quick one. I'll do Trunkapa and his two main students. And again, this is this works with Phonetic or Wiley. And then you can save it. You can name it. And then you can add add your description. And then if you log out, go away, you can come back and there it is. And if you, this is, this timeline is um, something that we'll probably be updating at some point. And we know that there are better timeline products out there. So probably in the next year or so, we'll, we'll work on something else. But if you have, if you wanna just get the data for that, you can again, also just export a CSV, which you can open up in Excel or in Google Sheets. Um, you can print, here's a printable version, which is not perfect because it's really made for a browser. So it's hard to get a good print view, but it kind of can give you an idea um, of, you know, you can copy and paste, you can sort of minimize here and expand to get the view that you, that you like. Now let's see if I can get out of it. My stuff with a print view. <laughs> um, but if there's any questions about how these tools work or if you're having a problem using any of them, um, you know, please feel free to reach out to us directly. I don't know if any of you have used these before, um, but we are always welcoming feedback and involvement. And a lot of our authors are graduate students as well. So if there's a research topic that you um, are working on that pertains to somebody's life, uh, please feel free to get in touch with us and, and um, contribute. Katie, do you want to just do a quick um, faceted search to? Uh, sure. Uh, I think that's valuable to, to have figure a, out how to get out of this print view, though. Oh, there, <laughs> oh, I see. The Zoom thing was covering up my full screen thing. Okay, figured it out. Um, yes. So advanced search. Um, here we go. So you can choose to search either the place or the person table. And these are the facets that we have. So you can do a search according to one tradition or multiple traditions. So let's say we wanted to do, and it'll kind of load them as you do it. So if this is too many, you can sort of refine it. I just wanna look at the 13th century and then it gives you links directly, direct, links, links directly to the biographies. Um, we should be able to add a CSV download so that you can 
save that information in a spreadsheet and get some of the other associated points of data. Um, and social roles gives you an idea of the kinds of social roles that we're tracking. And this list expands as our biographies expand. Um, and it's something that we're working on actively now and that Lauren has been helping us a lot with is to sort of build out the types of ways that people can be categorized. Um, so here you can see, this, this somewhat mirrors a lot of what you see on the front end of the site, but it allows you to refine, say you just wanna look at treasure revealers of a certain tradition. I think I must have century chosen or something, but it should be more than that, right? Oh yeah, that's why, okay. So there, Enigma treasure revealers, for example. Um, and then let's see if I can clear this and work on place. So here for place, this allows you to, and by the way, you can also you can also filter in this same way on the map itself, but this allows you to see everything in the same way that you can't um, zoom in and see everything sometimes unless you get really, really close. This allows you to see that in a list. So, so here you can refine by these features and you can also of course do a search based on phonetics. So if you kind of have an idea of a name, you know that, I don't know, I'm trying, like for example, here's a, it'll show you all the Gandans. And you know that it happens to be from a certain, we don't have region, that's something that we need to work on. That's been a tricky kind of thing for us to work on, but it's definitely on the forecast. Um, so that's sort of, or you can actually search both tables at the same time, which might be a little bit more confusing in terms of results, but it's, it's possible. So I think, is there any anything else, Alex, or? No, I mean, this faceted search is something we've been working on for years, um, you know, trying to, for a while it was on the main page and it, it's such a great idea, but getting it so that it's actually, you know, refining it has been been a struggle. I think it's, I mean, it definitely looks as, as good as it's looked has ever looked, but uh, I mean, we def we have wor more work to do on that. So if you have any suggestions, we're, we're always glad to uh, to incorporate it because I think it's very valuable. If you know you're looking, you, you, you've heard about a treasure revealer who was active in calm in the, you know, in the 17th century, but you can't remember the guy's name, this will allow you, you know, if we have the biography, this will allow you to, um, to, to, uh, to get to that biography. Um, so it's a, it's a, it's a great way of finding somebody if you don't know exactly who it is. I mean, otherwise, there's other ways of doing it, but this would be the most direct. So we're, 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 we're actively trying to, uh, to make this uh, even better. One of the things that we're working on now um, is a new data model. And part of that will be um, developing a much better search based on the kinds of relationships that we're identifying between people and places and events. Um, so that's something that we're working on and it's going to probably take a few more years until we can actually share with you the fruits of that labor. But I think it'll be pretty exciting because it's allowing us to see people in very um, kind of multi-dimensional ways. So amazing. Thank you guys so much for this project and also for this presentation. It's just uh, kind of blowing my mind here. Um, and I wonder if we can uh, see if people have questions in our remaining 10 minutes or so. Yeah, feel free to uh, either speak them or put them in the chat, however you like. I mean, I'll say while you're thinking of a question, we, we actively, you know, we actively recruit new authors. Uh, if you have information, you know, we're, we think of us as a publishing uh, venue. Uh, but if you know, if you have a photograph or if you have descriptions of places or if you have coordinates, we're, we're eager to add to the map. Um, we're similar, I don't know if you know this about BDRC, but they, they had a, a rule that they don't put any places or people up unless it's connected to a book because essentially they're a library, right? That makes sense. We have a similar rule where we don't put places or, yeah, we don't put places up on the map unless it's associated with a person whose biography we have, because we don't want uh, sort of an orphan record, right? Um, so, but, but we'll still, we'll, we'll gladly take the information for when we do uh, to, uh, get a biography. 
Related to one of the questions that came up in the chat, and I, I may have missed it, but is there, if you're on the person record, the bibliography, are you able to find whatever images that maybe you have found on that person? I was thinking maybe Katie could demonstrate that again. Sure, you mean in the bio to view? HAR? Yeah, if you're in a bio view. Sure, yeah. And you want to know, great, oh, is yeah. this per person in a painting or is there a photo mm -hmm. of this person? Uh, could you just show us that sure. again? A good, another good, um, yeah, let's see, I think, so if you go to, and this is something that we're constantly trying to build out, oh, view you go all the way down, mm -hmm. you can see all of the paintings that this person is mentioned in, or depicted in. At least the ones that we've, we've put up on the website. I mean, right. obviously there's more. So, and then if you click through, you can get to the painting at Himalayan Art Resources. We do, we have in the last year or so um, started to include, where did I go? Um, started to include collections of, um, or include paintings from collections that are now totally open source, like the Metropolitan Museum of Art has some amazing paintings, Cleveland as well. Um, I think, did we look at this one? Such a service and the photos as well, I suppose could, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And that's Point a photo of something that um, is also quite new and we hope to build that out as we are just beginning to add uh, more people from the 20th century. Okay. Oh, and I'm seeing a question too in the chat. Any thoughts or plans of adding explorers in the future? Oh. As in like uh, Stein or, or, or other yeah. Europeans, is that what you mean? Um, we, we just went through a, a, a pretty extensive conversation with all of our advisors and board members and such about whether we would put up biographies of people who weren't Asian, right? And it's, uh, it, I'll just tell you, it was a very difficult conversation and we decided not to. We decided that we were, uh, and so if you look at the, um, our description and about uh, page, you'll see uh, we added uh, um, something about uh, uh, native natives to the region, we decided, because, uh, you know, otherwise we're going to start winding up with biographies of scholars and uh, people who anyone engaged in, in Buddhism or Tibet or Asia. And it's just, you know, it's, that's not the place for it. There's other other places, you know, you can go to their Wikipedia page. So um, so we don't have uh, the sort of the 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 young husband or the, you know, the the folks who went to Tibet from from Europe or, or North America. I mean, another thing that I should mention is we also we only put up biographies of people who are no longer living. Um, we, we get asked this a lot. And, uh, you know, why is there no biography of the 14th Dalai Lama? Why is there no biography of my Lama? Why is there? And uh, it, it's just, uh, you know, we we uh, we don't the life is not finished yet. We're not going to re record it. So, uh, uh, yeah. I had a similar kind of related question about, I was thinking about people in Sikkim who are um, not Tibetan, but might feature. And I guess you kind of answered the question by saying that every person mentioned has to be kind of identified in a Tibetan language biography, I guess. So if a non-Tibetan Lepcha person or something were mentioned, right. Right. Would, would that? We, yeah, we have biographies of, of, uh, of Sikkimese. I mean, we have biographies of Bhutanese, of Ladakhis, of, uh, you know, of Nepalese. Um, it's really you know, of Mongolians, uh, of, uh, you know, of people who are, you know, Russian citizens. Uh, it, it's, not, it's not that uh, they don't have to be Tibetan. They'd have to be part of the sort of Tibetan cultural sphere and born, born into that tradition and in that region. Hmm. Uh, Obviously, it's it's uh, and tied somehow to a Tibetan language biograph, like a text, a biography in Tibetan language. Is that right? Um, you don't know because, uh, um, like, we've uh, I just uh, we just put up a biography of of, uh, of Trungpa Rinpoche. Um, so you know, people Tibetans who were maybe born in Tibet but lived most of their life in uh, you know Europe and America. Mm. Um, it's really it's it's not so much the literature it's it's the uh it's it's the origin maybe mm, okay. um, 
Yeah. And the connections I, that that person has to other biographies that we already have. So we sort of strive to show the student teacher relationships. Um, and so that information, which is usually available uh, quite extensively in this area, this left hand area of the page, um, is drawn from BDRC's data, but also we add that too. So you'll find a pretty comprehensive list for some of these people. Um, and that's another kind of rationale for why we would add a biography that may not have extensive written sources if it's mm -hmm. in a kind of lineage tradition. Mm -hmm. right. I see. Yeah, thank you. Maybe we have time for one quick last question. Okay, sure. Thank you. Uh, is there any uh, other way of searching non-Buddhist kind of genres other than like, let's say poetry and, and any other kind of literature that we might find important to search, but, but is that included or uh, is there any plan that is really be included in the near future? So you mean non-religious figures? Yeah, we do have already, and that hopefully that will grow. So we have, for example, a biography of Don Duque already on the site. Um, and as we move into the 20th century, more of those non-religious biographies are being published. So a lot of it has to do with, you know, who's 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 around, who's done the research, who's, who's willing to contribute. Um, but it's definitely, I think in the original incarnation, the site was devoted solely to religious masters, but we have actually broadened the scope Oh, you're muted, Alex. Sorry, my phone was ringing. Um, yeah, for the first 10 years, the site really was dedicated to religion. And then we realized, well, that's that's limited. You know, it's it's not a full picture of what these people were living through, even if we did want to continue to focus. Uh, because what about their patrons? What about the people who created the art? What about the people who were writing about them? So we do have a category on the on people. There's artists. Um, and we're, we're hoping to build that out more. Um, but 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 definitely, um, as we get more biographies of uh, of, of poets and authors and uh, historians, uh, we will create uh, not only those biographies, but we'll create the categories uh, for those people. Really, um, you know, politicians, traders, uh, um, really any sort of uh, any category of person for whom we can you know for which we can have the biographies, we're we're happy to include that on the, on the site. Well, amazing. Thank you so much. It's really, it's such an astounding resource and such an important contribution to the field. And uh, we're so grateful to you. All right. Please feel free to reach out directly via email if you have any questions or um, have specific requests for data that you'd like to see. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'll echo that as well. I mean, uh, Toronto and, and Columbia are both subscribers to the Treasure of Lives, and we take that seriously. We're we're available. Katie and I are available to answer questions, or uh, you know, help you find uh, stuff on the site or or things that are associated with the site. We'll uh, we'll, we'll gladly uh, have a conversation with you anytime. Thank you so much to the two of you. Thank you. Thank you. All right.